Hello and welcome to Warping Brick. And if um, my voice is not completely drowned out by the uh, sound of those uh, five F1 engines igniting, uh, this uh, video uh, it will you can uh, see that um, well, I'm launching a Saturn V, but um, a payload at the top. That's uh, certainly uh, interesting. So yes, uh, this is a um, lenticular re-entry vehicle design. And it, I realize in the uh, title it's a, uh, and for some now it's referred to it as a flying pancake, which I mean, that's what it looks like. But a uh, flying pancake refers to a specific experimental aircraft, which actually, which actually uh, looks pretty different from this. And so I was inspired by uh, various uh, lenticular re-entry vehicle designs, and uh, I and I was inspired to actually do this in Kerbal Space Program by the mod uh, Sterling Systems, which provides those a uh, large, um, they're meant to be heat shields that I've used for the uh, pancake section of it. Not sure what the proper term should be, and you understand what I mean by pancake. We've already just in the first stage, and this uh, launch is being played back pretty quickly, as it's normal Saturn V, except, well, First of all, you may see on the uh, second stage we have uh, seven engines instead of five. In the first stage, I had uh, lengthened, it, lengthened it by uh, three meters. As uh, other, well, I was a bit concerned about uh, Delta V because uh, this is a very heavy uh, craft. And we've uh, just in the second stage. And this uh, third stage, it's uh, widened and has uh, four engines on it. And uh, this was uh, done, again, due to Delta V issues. And you may have seen how uh, flat my, well, how steep my uh, launch profile was. Basically, I was worried about uh, this thing flipping out of control because, uh, yeah, it's a flying pancake. It has a very high surface area, and you don't want to lost surface area at the top of your rocket. But we've made it safely into orbit, so we can stage away the fairing and reveal the the extra habitat module that's provided. It has its own solar panels, a skin set, a high-res visual, visual high-res camera scanner thingy. I don't remember exa its exact name. Basically, it's a spy satellite camera they have mounted to this uh, space station. Because one of the notable lenticular re-entry vehicle designs was this Air Force uh, space bomber proposal. And so we can EVA over into the habitat. And uh, the design of this thing is uh, interesting. I have a bunch of stuff stuffed into the space between the two uh, heat shields. View inside the habitat. Also, this thing, Free IVA hates it. The uh, actual uh, crafted. Well, for the airlock on the habitat, it's not attached to a node, it's surface attached, which causes weird issues with Free IVA. As you can see, it's uh, not visible on this uh, tour. And if it, actually, maybe I should talk about what's on screen. But yeah, outside the window there, you could see the nitrogen tanks, as this craft has. Uh, um, has uh, consumables for 300 days on orbit. And, as I was saying, the, uh, so there's those uh, four Kerbals as long, uh, along with the uh, one in the uh, cockpit. And there are uh, two uh, small uh, crew cabins. Uh, they're, they're not clipped into the craft, they're just attached inside it. And you can see I'm uh, showing the adapter currently. And you can also see some reaction wheels that clipped in, clipped into the instrument unit. That was again done to keep it stable. I realize I didn't talk about the internals of the craft when it was on screen. Yeah, and the reason I have I have those wings clipped into it is because these Sterling System heat shields do not have aerodynamic properties which made this thing completely unflyable. And so, the uh, crew can reboard the space plane, the uh, habitat can uh, undock, uh, and yes, undock. Uh, the uh, well, the uh, reentry vehicle has a docking port, 
The space station does not. Well, habitat does not. That's why I'm not calling it a space station because it's expended once uh, used. And we have to drain the fuel from the craft in order to make it stable. And for some reason, trajectories lied to me and we're, uh, when we're landing nowhere near the Kerbal Space Center. And so we're entry. Well, this thing, it's interesting to fly. And also, for some reason, it worked better in test, and it did, like, it, it flew worse in the uh, actual recording that did in uh, off-camera test, and I'm unsure why, since I hadn't changed anything about it. But yeah, we were getting a bit, um, oh, we were pitching down unexpectedly a bit later in re-entry. Well, we've made it to the surface fine. We're just landing in a random field between some trees, because, uh, again, uh, trajectories lied to me. I have no idea why it does this, but my, uh, like, where I actually end up is nowhere near where, where it tells me I'm going to end up. But we can land, and I didn't configure my brakes properly, so we did that. But the craft is in one piece. And so, I think, I mean, any landing you can walk away from, right? And so as I get some uh, nice shots of the uh, vehicle, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, sorry for, again, only making short videos. I want to thank you for watching. Please like and, please like and subscribe. And goodbye!